Hello and welcome to another ARM Software Developer Breakdown. My name is Robert Wolf, and in this video, you guessed it, we are once again joined by Paul Howard, Principal System Solution Architect from ARM, who has been walking us through a very cool demo on Parsec, the platform abstraction for security. If you missed any of the previous parts to this series, cruise on down to the description and find the part that you're on. Paul, so far, you've given us a great overview of the demo. You got a set up with our workstation and we even got Parsec up and running. So now I think it's time for you to show us the Parsec command line tool and what it can do. Could you please start off by telling us a little bit about it and what you're gonna be showing us today? Thanks, Robert. Okay, so there are different ways that we can choose to consume the APIs of the Parsec service. But for a quick and convenient demo today, we're just gonna use this handy little command line interface, which is known as the Parsec tool. Now the Parsec tool gives us an easy way to drive Parsec operations from a command line or shell script. The way it communicates with the Parsec service is just the same way as any other applications would do. Uh, so the tool uses a Parsec client library to make API calls using a common wire protocol that is carried over a Unix domain socket. And that's why we created the run slash Parsec folder in the previous video, because there is a Parsec.soc file that the service is going to create in that folder. And this socket is used by all of the client applications, including the Parsec tool, uh, to consume the API and to drive the service. Now, Parsec clients are very thin. They don't contain a lot of smarts or functionality themselves. Uh, they just send API commands over this wire to the service, and it's the service that's then responsible for all of our key storage, all of our cryptographic operations. And once again, it's the service through those backend provider modules that is responsible for using the hardware facilities of our platform to store our keys securely. Okay, so let's go back over to the Raspberry Pi screen at this point and we'll clone and build the Parsec tool. So we have our Parsec service running there. We can still see it. Um, we'll go back to the Parsec homepage in GitHub over here in the web browser. And let's navigate out of the service directory. And we'll go up to the parent Parallax second organization before we head over to the Parsec tool repository, which is just down here. Okay, let's head into this one. Um, and once again, we'll grab the URL of the repo. Let's just grab that onto our clipboard here and head into a new shell and let's clone Parsec tool here. And let's just paste in our URL. Okay, we've got the Parsec tool. Now, like the Parsec service, the Parsec tool is implemented with Rust. Uh, it consumes the Rust client library for Parsec. Uh, so we need to build that and we're going to use Cargo again. Once again, the Cargo build system, very smart, very easy. We just need to issue this one command uh, and Cargo will go do the heavy lifting for us. Not that it's that heavy in this case. Uh, the Parsec tool is a much smaller thing to build than the service was. Uh, but in any case, I will fast forward um, a little bit past this. Okay, and that's done. So now we've built the Parsec tool, we're going to use the Parsec tool to ping the service uh, to make sure that it's running correctly. The easiest way to do this uh, is if we change directory into the slash target slash debug folder where cargo stores the binary that we've just compiled. Um, and then we can issue our very first Parsec command at this point. So let me ping the service here. And there we go, that comes back with a little message telling us that the service is up and running and supporting version 1.0 of the wire protocol. Let's do another command. Let's do a list providers command. Remember that our providers are the backend modules that contain our platform specific knowledge. So it will come back with some information about how the backend is configured. We'll say more about this later, but what you can see here is that there's a default configuration. There is always a core provider. This one doesn't do any sort of key storage or cryptography for us, it just supplies some housekeeping operations. But you can also see there that we have this embed crypto provider running. That's the provider module that's using the embed crypto library. The embed crypto provider is a nice convenient way to get started with Parsec because it works right out of the box on pretty much any system you can think of, not just the Raspberry Pi. And it works without any special hardware integration being needed. Uh, the keys are actually just stored on the file system, which is absolutely fine while we're just experimenting. Okay, we have a healthy Parsec service and we have a way to talk to it. So Robert, we're ready to wrap this topic and we're ready to move on to the next part. Well, that was a lot of fun. This demo is really coming along. 
I say we keep it rolling. So in the next video, we will tackle key provisioning and RSA encryption end to end using ARM Embed. As a reminder, don't forget to like this video, follow our channel and stay tuned because the demo will continue.